Hey folks, Steve here, and unfortunately I'm not going to be doing any countdowns for my Dilkin game spread. I tried writing for one, but uh, let's just say it got a little complicated. Basically, it would just could have been it would have been me going through the mechanics of each character, and it would have just come off as repetitive and would have dragged on for too long. So instead, I'm going to do a review of the, the newest set that I got in the mail recently, Combat Zone set number one. Now, for those who don't know, Combat Zone Wrestling is kind of similar to ECW back in the 90s, but the violence is really shot up there using stuff like uh, glass, uh, barbed wire, and fluorescent light tubes. I mean, I mean, when I first heard that, I was like, for crying out loud, you guys are going too far. But uh, in using it for, for my Ring of Honor set, I'm going to not use the violence stuff as much, but see how things go and if I want to keep them when I get a new set later on. Now, I'm going to be talking about, mostly talking about these cards on two things. Their, art, their artwork and their gameplay mechanics. Just, I'm just going to rifle off basic stats and how each level of offense and defense are, how how they fare. And as well, let's start off with Adam Cole. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to be using this card because uh, I already have the most recent one from recent edition of this card from Tradition of Honor. That being said, there is artwork not bad. Uh, my my only complaint about the artwork overall in this set lack of background, just black. Um, I'm not. It's not exactly a com total complaint, but take a look at his set for his card from Ring of Honor. Nice background, a bit of a logo in the back depicting his uh, Playboy attitude, I suppose. And, well, actually, I guess it's supposed to be from Panama City, Florida. That would work, and him being posed up on the on the turnbuckle works too. Now look at his tradition of honor card. Now this one might have a, a black background too, but the light, the low lighting actually works since it, it's how he would be depicted in. Uh, entrances on television. You know, that's a definite improvement over this. If you're starting out with the the basic set of Ring of Honor, if you want to put Adam Cole into singles competition, definitely get this set just for this card. For this card, his his uh, ropes rating is pretty exceptional, but his but you would trade off. A C rating on his death jump for 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 a C rating on turnbuckle and out of the ring, but then, but also this card is his agility is minus two instead of minus three for for the other two, and overall it's average. Next up, Drew Gulak. Now I wasn't going to talk too much about the the characters themselves, like backstory or whatnot, but this this guy's pretty interesting. He's kind of like anti-violent wrestling, kind of like Steve Carino back in ECW. His stats are pretty low, with agility of agility of zero and power of plus two. So middle of the road. And with the exception of a C rating in turnbuckle, he's got B's all across the board in fact it's in in a matter of charts. For well let's see. Fairly a, kind of average defenses. Could I could definitely see improvements as Especially with another his updated card in Evolve, and he actually pulled off an upset when I tested the cards out a few days ago. Next we have Joker. Now, 
Well, he's a member of the Blackout stable, that's the most I know. Kind of slow, average, average power. Hmm. Defense is average as well. Definitely has a good chance for offensive strength on level two. He has an add one move on six. Not bad. Put him in a tag match with one of the guys I'll mention later. Greg, excellent. This guy could be a, a good, could be a good underdog character. His defenses are pretty solid. Uh, on level, especially on level one and two, and it's pretty average on on level three as well. Level three does it, definitely has an advantage. He's got a plus three move on five, but it has a chance to has a chance to miss, and his finisher can upgrade to from zero to plus two if you're in a if you put him into a if he's fighting in a an ultra violent no rules match. Basically, it's kind of like uh, Texas Death Match, but if you roll doubles when you're out of, on the out of the ring chart, and it counts as a uh, weapon. They intended that it's implied that a that weapons are used, and whoever's on defense adds one to their pin rating for fatigue. So he actually pulled out a win, even though he's a little slow and his his power is a little above average. And, and uh, also another hit he takes is ropes and death jump on, on C. So I'm hoping he, he, do, he at least wins the secondary, his, my, my television title in there. Masada. Oh boy, this guy, a lot of potential for hardcore matches, especially because of the fact in the aforementioned No Rules Ultra Violent matches, is. His pin rating will, will improve by two. Most noble thing about it, well, let, let's check the defenses for, before I get to the offense. Very, very good level one. For pretty much good level, level two and level three. It's good. Uh, as for his as for his level three offense, guy, his you actually when you roll roll the six for the finisher, you have to roll again to find out what kind of how strong the finisher is. On one, it's a zero. Two through five, it's a plus two. On six, it's a I'm sorry, two through five is a plus one, and six is a plus two. So he can pull one out if if, if he gets going. DJ Hyde. Now, let me see. Pretty good. Re really slow. Of, um, plus three agility. Minus two power. Not bad. Fairly average in the Ring of Honor areas of Bill Singer. Um, hmm. Good defenses. Well, not as good as most really good ones. Level two is it's it's almost good, and I'd have to say level three is okay. Level three for level two, for offense level one and levels one and two are fairly average. Um, and definitely gets advantages on level three when, it, especially if he get, got two out of the ring. Nat one on five and uh, standard plus one on six. Danny Havoc, another guy who can, who definitely gets an improvement on ultraviolet matches. Oh, defenses are pretty solid. On level one, average on uh, slightly below average on level two, and okay on level three. Only thing I can say about the offense, he's the only guy in in this set that has two finishers instead of one, but they're both rating zero. A.R. Fox, 
fastest guy in the set. He's got a minus four agility. I have yet to see any very few guys with minus five, except for one, I believe, except for one in uh, one of them in Chikara, I believe that's Frightmare, who has a minus five. Oh wow, he, his defenses are pretty good in level one. They're okay in two. Pretty mediocre in three. And average on average offense is a level one and two. And for three, he's got a suicide attack on five, which means he it's an add one for both, which means not only does what his what the opponent get a fatigue counter, but he would as well. And a zero rating finisher. Now for the only female in the set, Mia Yim, the uh, girlfriend and valet of Adam Cole at that particular time. Sorry. Now, her offense, her defense is actually pretty good. Um, her, her defense, a uh, level 2 defense is okay. And level 3 is pretty average. Even though her pin rating kind of is the lowest I've seen so far. Agility of zero, power and power plus one, so average and there. Basic things I could say about her charts are best and worst of her charts are a ring ring of A and step jump of C. She's got a she's got a pretty good chance of landing her her move three on on the bottom of level one offense if she can fight someone with a power rating of plus one or worse. Pretty average level two and a pretty average level three with a plus one finisher. Black G's uh, aka Sabian who could be a great partner for um for Joker as Philly's most wanted. Um let's see. Agility minus three, power plus three. Big chart rating of A in for the for into the ropes. And fairly solid defensive pretty good and defensive on level one. Okay on level two and pretty good on level three. Now he could take a hit on offense level he, he could lose a bit in offense level one because he's got a on six he's got a, a move three that requires a power check which means you know it would only work if, if the opponent has plus three or worse so definitely going to lose something, lose ground on that. Average level two, an add one on five, level three, an add one on five, and a zero finisher on six. Drake Younger. I've actually been looking forward to this guy because the original card had a light tube attack on level three, but they took that one out for this one just to, I guess, break it up. Whoa, pretty good defenses, pretty pretty good down and pretty good pin rating. If he if he doesn't get any fight someone with agility in the in the negative, he could hit that three on level one. Uh, average level two definitely has his five on level three could have a chance to become an add one if you roll correctly. And a plus two finisher. Not bad. And finally, Sammy Callahan. Let's see. Plus one on agility, zero for power. A's in turnbuckle and ring. Very solid. 
Ooh, very solid. Uh, very, very solid. Uh, de defenses on one and two. And, and three. Oh my gosh, this guy's good. Um, his level one's okay. His level two is... I think it's pretty good. He's got he's got an add one in on six. Level three's got a, he's got a, much like AR Fox. He's got a suicide attack on five for level three. And add one to both, I mean. Um, and a plus one finisher. So there, there it is. That that is combat zone wrestling number set number one. And starting tonight, I'm probably gonna incorporate them into my fed and get it going. And maybe starting next week, I'll do give reports on how each pay per view was has turned out, and yeah, I guess it would be an alternate to posting it on Facebook to Tom's page. So stay tuned, you guys. I'll see you later.